This is an interview at the Division of Military and Naval Affairs Headquarters, Latham, New York. It is the 13th of July, 2005, approximately 10.40 a.m. Interviewers are Wayne Clark and Mike Russert. Could you give me your full name, date of birth? Paul A. Butkerit. B-U-T-K-E-R-E-R-T. -E -E okay, what is your date of birth and place of birth, please? 4 13 22. The place is a, is a little town on Long Island, East Rockaway. Uh, okay. No relation to Rockaway. <laughs> okay. Um, do you, what was your educational background prior to entering service? I was an RPI. And uh, I wasn't doing great, you know, it was just mm -hmm. typical, you know. And I had 10 days notice. I was going to be in the infantry. So I quickly went down to New York to Whitehall Street and enlisted. Okay. <laughs> um, do you do you remember prior just before we talk about that? Do you remember where you were and uh, your reaction when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Where were you and and how did you hear about that? I I remember when uh, when they hit Pearl Harbor. I was just I was on an at a, at a RPI. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful day, you know, and well, it was a shock. Mm -hmm. yeah. How did you hear about it? I don't have any Okay, you know. all right. Um, so you enlisted. Why did, did you pick the Army Air Corps, the Army yeah. Air Force? Why? Because I thought it was a, <laughs> that was, that was a, a better service, you know. Was, I thought I'd do better there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did I, you ever I fall? Didn't want, I didn't want to be in, you know, my father, uh, well, uh, that's another story. My father escaped <coughs> Germany just before the war. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. had, <coughs> had you ever flown before no, you entered? No, not, 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 not any, uh, occasional, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to say I never did, mm -hmm. but okay. I don't know when I did. You know? All right. Um, where did you go for your basic training? Basic training, Larry City. Mm -hmm. Now, when did you enter the service? Uh, I entered the service. What did I enter? I don't know. Well, that's, that's okay. I, I don't even know where I entered the service. Okay. Yeah, the first thing, uh, the first thing I remember is being in Atlantic City. <laughs> <laughs> we were in, the, in one of those big hotels, mm -hmm. and uh, they had everything. All the stairs were covered with duck boards, you know, so we wouldn't destroy them, <laughs> you know. And uh, it was an experience, you know. But it wasn't like being out in the field. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. <coughs> so Where did you go after Atlantic City? Um, I'm not sure anymore. But I did end up in Nashville. Okay. Where they decided, they gave me a bunch of psychomotor tests. Mm -hmm. You know, and they checked off whether I'd make a good pilot or what, how they could use me. See, my problem was that they got a hold of me and then they didn't know what the hell to do with me. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so so before I went to Nashville, I was uh, I, I went to uh, that school up in in, uh, in Vermont. You know that um, just below Barry. The Marines at, what the hell's the name of that? Norwich? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they sent, that was like going back to high school, to grade school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, why so, didn't they send you to Norwich? Because they didn't know what to do with me. Oh, okay. You know, they had, they had the, the, at that time, they got air superiority. And it was just on the tail end of the war. You know, I mean, it was a, a, a we, we, we established air superiority, and our, and our losses went plummeted. And they had all these guys in the Army, in the uh, Corps, mm -hmm. and they didn't know what to do with us, you know. There was nobody being killed. <coughs> so that's the way it was. You know. Now, when you went to Nashville, where, where did they assign you? Um, uh, they, said, they said I would make it good. Bombardier, mm -hmm. or some other 
bike navigator or something like that. But um, that <laughs> it said I'd never make a pilot. You know, I just didn't have it in me mm -hmm. to, to do that. So what do you think they did? I don't know what. They sent me a pilot truck. No. <laughs> 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 so where'd you go for your pilot training? Well, the first part of it, where I went to, I was up in, I was in that school, up in Vermont. Okay. And the, and they had a they had a couple of little little planes, you know, the biplanes, and uh, they took me up about three thousand feet, and I my thing, and I had a ball, you know, it was fun. <coughs> but I never learned. I never learned to land the plane. When I got down to the bottom, I went stiff and I went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> The ground scared the hell out of me. <laughs> oh, so what am I going to do? And then I went to pilot training somewhere else. Where the hell did I go? Oh, Panama City? No. No. Uh, in Florida. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Lakeland. Lakeland, Florida, and I was there about a month, and they decided, they tried and tried and tried to make a pilot out of me, <laughs> to no avail, because I had the same problem. Mm -hmm. Every time I got near the ground, I would freeze. Too uh, uh, so bad, but that, that's the way it was. So anyway, then they, then they were mad at me that I hadn't, that I hadn't performed. Mm -hmm. Like they said, so they sent me to Panama City to, for gunnery training. And in gunnery training, I was really good at it, you know. <laughs> I was really good at it. So, so then they decided that I was too smart to be a gunner. So then they sent me to, to uh, then they sent me to, to, uh, Oh, Bom Bombardier School? Huh? Did you go to Bombardier School? No, no, no. They made a navigator. Navigator, okay. <clears throat> and uh, I was good at that because I was kind of good at numbers, you know. And, uh, and, and uh, that was all of them. So, <laughs> so then they assigned me to, that was, that was in, 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 in Louisiana, Selma, Selma, Louisiana. <coughs> and then from there, I was assigned to a, to a, to a plane, to be plane, uh -huh. not to be the navigator. And, and now that's where you were assigned a crew also? The yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Now where was that? Uh, I'm trying to remember where. <laughs> and some of them pick their planes up in the in uh, Nebraska. No, I believe. No, no. That was just a crew. No, no, mm -hmm. no plane. Oh, okay. <clears throat> um, so anyway, one of these, you know, they had one of these training cupolas. You know, what do mm -hmm. they call them? I don't know what the hell they call them. And the, I was in there. With, with the pilot, my co-pilot, and I was, it was completely dark, and I was supposed to navigate from here to between two pylons here, okay? And here we go, we're, 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 we're going along, and I said, uh, estimated time of arrival, and the pilot never heard that term. <laughs> <laughs> He thought it was the attempt to change directions. So we changed directions and we went off at an angle. And, and we were going along and then I tried to, I, I realized he'd made a mistake. <coughs> and uh, and I, I tried to figure out the time, you know, what time we changed direction. And it was all estimated. And, and finally, and then I had to get a new bearing on that pylon, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and when we got upstairs, or downstairs, whatever, uh, 
and showed us what we had done. It was a great big figure four, you know, we made, and we got right smack between those pilots. <laughs> and the pilot was so, was so impressed, he thought I was, uh, he thought I was the, the gosh gift to earth, you know. <laughs> it was something. I really was good at it, yeah. Yeah. Now you used the Norton bomb site? No. We didn't have that yet. Oh, okay. It was only 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 the lead uh, kind of uh, only the lead, lead ship okay. had had that and every and, and well let let me get ahead of the story. <laughs> and we finally went overseas. And we went over the Libby ship. And um, out of one of the, one, one of the, I think it was probably Virginia. It was Virginia, yes. We went out of Virginia, and uh, <coughs> we 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 went. We didn't know where they were going to send us, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we ended up in in Africa. And Oran, and uh, then they left us off and Oran, and they took off. They took off, took off for other. They, they went back, I guess, to, to the states, you know. And here we are in Oran for at least five days, maybe more. And our destination was Naples. So, <laughs> the army got a hold of an old, old uh, banana boat. Yeah. Oran was a banana source. Mm -hmm. And they would ship bananas to France. And before they scuttled it, they took, the Germans took, the, took all the metal out of the ship. And, uh, and and the thing the the ship was was going at a li at a list about fifteen degrees, you know, and they had to keep high left right I keep it trying to go straight. Uh, anyway, it took us five days to get to to get to Naples, and then they decided that we they didn't have room for some <laughs> Naples, that they wanted us down at the foot of. And the first time we were in Brindisi, and then we went down the foot of the foot of Italy. Mm -hmm. They had they had an air base down there, and that was the first we ever got a hold of a ship. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, we got a ship too. And now, uh, were you assigned the same plane all the time? No. Or? Mm -hmm. Did you, did you ever get to name one or paint one no, up or no. anything? The, uh, the, on the front, we only had six missions. And we were shut down. Mm -hmm. okay. All that money that, the, that they spent on my education and the, the pilot's education, all down the drain. <laughs> so anyway, what was I going to say? I don't know. <coughs> oh yeah, that plane that we were flying had 67 holes in it from the day before, so it was bad shape. But uh, when we got over Vienna, um, some flak hit us and knocked out the, the, the hydraulic system. They got number three engine, and as a result of all the well, the pilot, well, well, the propellers couldn't be feathered. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> he, uh, the pilot, Jack Kent, was the, was the pilot. And he said, light and ship. Okay, we're light and ship. I threw everything out, including my, my map and everything. There was no weight in that, you know, but. That was that, that was the thing to do. But I, later on, I found out that lightning shipment gets rid of the bombs. 
Did they throw out the machine guns too? Well, uh, we had a machine gun up in the nose, you know. Uh -huh. yeah. So when, <laughs> so anyway, in, in the in the in the um, in the activity, you know, we we had these earphones that were plugged into the wall, you know, and I stepped on it. We didn't have any earphones anymore, and I looked out in the back. And we were the only ones in the plane. You could see from the turret. We could see right through the through the plane. So I said, hey, get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were on your way to Vienna and when you were we, hit? We had we had hit Vienna. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what else do I need to know? That's the story. Yeah. So, so you, when, ba you so bailed out. Went, huh? You bailed out at that point. Yeah. So I was waiting for the nose gunner to, to jump out. You know, we were all put the, the parachutes on and all that shit, and he was standing there. Uh, he was just standing there, and you kept mumbling. You know, I thought he was praying, so I didn't interfere. You know, but all of a sudden he said ten, and he pulled the ripcord. He was still in the plane. They were right in front of me, and the and the drogue chute popped out, and I grabbed them. I grabbed them one by the collar and one by his belt, and I just heaved them out. <laughs> <laughs> I saved his life, you know. But but he got a terrible scar on the back of his head when he hit the hatch. So that was that. So when I got down to the bottom, when I got when I got down, <clears throat> I was only about maybe a hundred feet or so from my pilot, and I was so excited. I was gesturing, you know, <laughs> and and Jack was burying his par his parachute so they wouldn't see him, you know. And uh, I just ignored all that, you know. We were in the middle of a potato field from one horizon to the other. And I knew that damn well there was no way we were going to get away, you know. So all of a sudden, a whole bunch of farmers came along with shotguns. Now I had had a, I had had a, 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 a 45, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and when I jumped out, it, it ripped away from it was just tied on with shoelace. Mistake. Because it went flying. <laughs> and uh, so I was unarmed, and it turns out that Jack was too. And before you know it, they, they had surrounded us. And I was very friendly with them right away. Because I spoke a little bit of German. <laughs> and, and one of, all of a sudden, one of them was uh, was having a like a Gestapo in training, and he said, "Ah, you do this partisani," and he's got the gun and put it under my put it under my nose, you know, and that I got settled down pretty fast. <laughs> and uh, so that that was the end of that. And we just marched back to the barracks that they had there. And it was an air, air, we went to an airport, a German airport, in a bakery. And, uh, and like like I said, they didn't know what to do with us either. You know, <laughs> a bunch of there was a bunch of bunch of untrained. You know, mm -hmm. you know they, they didn't mean any harm except this one guy. He was going to shoot me. So anyway, I don't know how to tell them anymore. <coughs> now, do you know what happened to the rest of your crew? Was it captured uh, also, I, I, or I, I, we we just we had one injury. The radio, the radio operator. He was thirty some years old, maybe thirty four, and he sprained his ankle coming down, coming down on that potato field. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, and that sprained ankle got worse and worse and worse when he walked on it. 
-hmm. And the Germans took a very good care of them. They sent them to the hospital and the whole schmear. And then the Germans, then the Russians were coming and we decided we had to march out. And I, I wasn't getting involved in that because I was already on a train to go to Frankfurt on Main. Am I following? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, on the train we saw the, the prisoners, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the forced labor and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. It was all very obvious. So that's the first time you were aware of the, the concentration camps yeah. and the prisoners yeah. like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, when I got to Frankfurt on Main, they put us in a, uh, it, was, it, was not a, it was not a barracks, it was just a warehouse, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, they showed me where I had, could sleep and they locked me in and all that. But in, in the middle of the night, the guy came and brought me more blankets. <laughs> 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 they felt sorry for us, you know. Oh, it was funny. Now, did they keep the officers together and the enlisted separate, or were you all uh, together? Well, no, it, was, uh, it wasn't. Uh, it, I don't know. I don't know how it was arranged. I have no idea. But uh, I was in there. It seems to me I was in with a couple of my classmates, you know. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, uh, other people had different experiences. They went to different places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so we, so I went to Frankfurt on Main, and we were there maybe, I don't know, maybe ten days or so, and we interrogated me, and uh, my uh, co-pilot was mad at me because they knew all our names. The Germans had picked up one when I when we lighted the ship I threw everything out. I got a hold of it, you know. Uh. <laughs> and then they blamed it on me. You know, well, I told them I had nothing to do with it. You know, that's a mistake. So I didn't know what had happened. I didn't realize what had transpired. Mm -hmm. So anyway, before you know it, we got on another train and went north, right to the Baltic Sea. <coughs> and uh, that camp was Starlog something or other. I don't know the number. It was one of the early Starlogs. And it was typical it was a great big compound and it was the subdivided into barracks, you know, a couple mm -hmm. hundred men on each mm -hmm. barracks. And we got assigned uh, we got into we got assigned to a room that had like twenty four men in it. Maybe. I'm just estimating. But at night one of the guys <laughs> was evidently a was evidently a, 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 a borderline because he spent all night long telling us pornographic stories. <laughs> and when they found out that I could maybe read German or talk German, they put me in the number one camp, only four guys together. So I was very fortunate, you know. I didn't, re I didn't remonstrate, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> but I sure missed that pornographic <laughs> guy with his pornographic stories. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so then there were four of us in the in that little camp, in that little room, and we were there. We, we, we were there. And I had very little occasion to use what little German I had, but they made me. Uh, one of my duties was to go out. At night, across the, the wire, you know, they had the wire you turn across, and then they had the main wire, you know. And I went across, and, and, I, and I was, was uh, I was buying and selling, 
What, what we had to offer was Red Cross chocolates, Red Cross cigarettes. And if they were really desperate, we had read some Red Cross meals. You know, those canned meals, mm -hmm. clam. Mm -hmm. well, so, so that became my main function, was going across the, the wire at night and, and trying to trying to negotiate some something out of these uh, goodies that I had. Mm -hmm. Now was this, was this with local people? No, oh, they were guards. Oh, the guards you, you oh, I wanted to tell you when we were in Vienna. When, oh, go back to Vienna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, they, they chose the opera house as a prison. And we were down in the set cellar of this prison of this opera house. And one of the guards was my age then. Mm -hmm. You know, he was in his eighties then. And he had been a he had been singing, you know. And he went up and down the hall singing away. He filled the whole place up with 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 music, you know. It was he did it for our, the, he wanted to be friends. Mm -hmm. So 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 I'll go back to go back to Bath. So anyway, when the war, when the, when the end of the war, what happened was the Russians came along and they liberated us. And, <clears throat> and uh, that, then our own organization took over. You know, we had, we had, we had a well-organized organization. And nothing changed, you know. We, no, nobody, even, the Russians couldn't understand why we weren't happy. We, we did, you know, we just accepted the fact that we were liberated. That was no big deal, you know. So, <laughs> so the word came out. You got to show them that we're we are pleased with them. The Russians, and then we we went out and we tore down the fences and the guard towers, and we made a big deal, you know. Mm -hmm. But I got so excited. I have a good friend. I had made a very good friend, Sam uh, Seabrook Sams, and he was from Florida, from Tampa. <clears throat> that's, the, that's the strawberry country, and the name of the company was Seabrook. So he must have stolen. <laughs> he must have stolen that name to get in the army. You know, I, he never said that. <clears throat> but we were very good friends. So Sam says to me, "Let's get the hell out of here." So we we had been jogging, you know. All the time we were out there dragging as, as long as we ran, until we ran out of energy. And then, and, and, well, we didn't have anything to eat for about two weeks. The Russians gave us bread and they gave us cabbage and we had stored up uh, rations from the Red Cross. And so um, the Russians had been on a detail of getting rid of the, the slops. They were cleaning up the pit, the, 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 uh, the what they had just opened septic tanks. Mm -hmm. And the, then they come with their the horse and, and, and the tank and they fill the tank with crab and take them, take them out in the fields and dump them in the field for fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> as a result of that, they had access to food from the Germans. So they passed along some of their food to us. So anyway, later on I found out that the Russians, because they were sick, because they were deserters, they called them deserters. 
because they allowed themselves to be prisoners. Oh, the Russians that yeah. were captives. Yeah, and they killed them all. But in the meantime, I picked up a terrible case of dysentery. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so Sam and I got the hell out of there, and we started running east, uh, west, excuse me. And we ran and ran and ran. And before you know, we came across the Russian gypsies. You know the gypsies? Mm -hmm. The Roma? They had the tents set up very elaborately and, and terrific. They had terrific, uh, what should I say? Um, <coughs> organization, you know? It was. It was like a military organization, and um, so they treated us very well, especially with vodka. <laughs> and Sam fell for it, boy, he got so drunk. <laughs> but I was very cautious, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I was brought up, I was brought up that that was poison. <laughs> So I was, I was very evasive, but I tried to hide it, you know. And anyway, the next day we, we picked up and ran some more, and ran and ran and ran. We finally got to Lubeck. You familiar with Lubeck at all? Have you ever heard of it? I've heard of it. It's like a seaport, a little, little mm -hmm. tiny fishing port on the Baltic Sea. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, here we are in Lubeck, and we're wandering into this little city, and all of a sudden we come across this opal. Looked like a brand new car, and it was parked very carefully against the curb, you know. And so, I go over, and there's the key, is in the ignition. So I didn't even open the door, I just reached in. Open, uh, the window was open, you know, I just reached in, and the damn thing started. Oh, man, I could have blown myself up because it could have been booby trapped, you know? <laughs> but I never gave that a thought. I was so delighted to have a car. We, we, we had that car, and we, we, we found the Autobahn, and we, find, we finally got to the, to the German checkpoint, you know, they had the Germans, and not the Germans, the, the British. Oh, Jesus, I guess, get confused. Yeah, and, and, uh, and they, they, they just passed us on. They were just so happy to see us, you know? Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and we kept going and going and going. Sam's had been a fighter pilot. He had one of those engines with the you know, the circular engine, the pistons coming all over. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. His specialty was dive bombing. And he would dive bomb the, lo the German locomotives. And the locomotives would, would get caught in his machine gun fire and blow up. Mm -hmm. And his wingman flew right into the debris and it was six wingmen. That's serious, right? Yeah. But that was his job. He, he, was, he was number one. He was number one. And anyway, where am I at? So here we are on the Autobahn. And he's, Sam's just trying to find his old outfit. He was with, with one of these bomber outfits. That was their specialty. Mm -hmm. And finally we got up into the into the Bavaria Alps and we come to Berchtesgaden. And we had taken over Berchtesgaden and made a base out of it. And there was his outfit. And there was only one guy in his whole outfit that he knew. <laughs> they were all shot down or or worse, you know. Uh, so anyway, that's the way it was. And, and from there, then they got a hold of us. 
the establishment got a hold of us and they sent us to Paris. They flew us out to Paris. And the pilot on the way to Paris made a special little trip or a little leg, like a, what do you call it, dog leg, mm -hmm. to, to Nuremberg. Because there were all these buildings and all the slate roofs were in the street. And I'd never forget that. I'll never forget that. Yeah. So here we are in Paris, and they put us up in the, the what they call it, the, the one of the big department stores they converted to a barracks. And it's a Du Fayel. Did, you, did, you, did, you, did anybody ever mention that? Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> so, uh, again, Sam's has a ball. <laughs> he went to every red light district there was in Paris and had uh, kind of found out where the liquor was and all. Oh, Jesus. And I was very nice, you know. I was very nice. Well, from there they, they put us on a plane and sent us to Camp Lucky Strike. Mm -hmm. And that was the end of my freedom. <laughs> it was all very military, you know. And, uh, it, was, it was interesting. So it took a long time before we got a liberty ship back to the States. You know, same thing. And we finally got back to the States. I don't remember where they brought us. I think, oh, they, I know where they was. They brought us at the Boston. Yeah. I remember that. So what else, you, what can I, what, well, can, um, what, what can I tell you? When were you discharged? I don't. Uh, must have been. Uh, I was discharged. That that came along the 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 uh, the, the, the VE day, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and then they sent me to uh, Fort Dick to be uh, discharged, mm -hmm. and the girl the the, the whack, you know, there was enumerated all the all the medals that I was entitled to, and <laughs> left. It says I was in the in five days, and you're going to put me on the on the. Uh, <laughs> you're going to give me a medal for that? Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, uh, that, that's the way it went, and from there I went. I was out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you uh, take uh, make any use of the GI Bill at all? Oh yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm under right now. I, I'm diabetic. Uh -huh. no, I'm not diabetic. I'm, 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 uh, this is, you ever seen one of these? Put your, put your finger right here. Put your finger right there. You can you feel my pulse? Yeah, up here. Yes, I can. What is that? <laughs> okay. It's an implant. Ah. And um, this it starts here at a it's sewn to it's sewn to to a uh, to an artery and it goes the blood goes around and it's sewn to a vein on the side and and it's made out of a plastic fiber tube the tube is plastic fiber. So that when you stick it with a needle, it won't break. It won't like a. Mm -hmm. See, that was a very good invention. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, ever use the? You used the GI Bill then with the VA hospital then. Yeah. Uh, did you ever use the fifty two twenty club? No, I don't know that. It was uh, it was like an unemployment insurance when you got out. 50, no, no. I two didn't. weeks, twenty dollars a week. No. Okay. I didn't feel like that. Uh, I didn't feel I needed that. Mm -hmm. I, I hadn't had this yet. Mm -hmm. you know? Do you? Did you uh, stay in contact with anyone that was in service with no, you? No, not particularly. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about veterans organizations? No, never joined. No. Okay. How do you think your time in the service changed or had an effect on your life? 
I changed my head. You know, I, yeah, I, 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 I was not very, very lucky. I was very lucky. I had a good experience going over on the Liberty ship and a better experience going over on the banana boat. <laughs> and, 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 and I only had six missions. Mm -hmm. I was just starting to get worried. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really wasn't worried yet. And, uh, and then I had a good experience in the prison camp, you know. So, so all in all, I was very, very lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for your interview. Okay.